Good morning, welcome back to the Abbey Angler. Um, lovely calm morning at the minute. We've got a couple of hours window where I can go fishing, so I'm gonna do it. After today, it blows up for the rest of the week, so. Um, I had to drop my partner to work this morning at sort of 6am so I thought well I'll come down a boat get a bit of fuel and while we're here we'll pop out and see what's about. Um, squid in this morning, um, so all we got is a couple of little squid jigs, a couple of dropper loops and that goes down to a, uh, got a savage gear lure on there, pink one, I will change that for a slightly less vibrant one in a minute. Um, but that's just going to go over the side, let that trot about with the, uh, with the motion of the ocean and that'll work itself. The boat moving around will naturally jig the lures. Um, up and down anyway. There has been quite a few squid caught around Brighton at the minute, so I thought well, I'd try and snatch a few for my other half's dinner. Um, and while that's going on up and down, etc., etc., I'm going to throw some lures about, try and catch a bass off the top. I've got a mega bass zonk, uh, sort of subsurface lure uh, on my lure rod, um, and maybe hopefully try and snatch a garfish as well. I was going to bring my float rod out, but I uh, decided against it. Um, but yeah, hopefully we get a few squid and a few bass, and of course if I film it, then I'll, uh, I'll get you all involved. So this is my lure. All I've got is me a Cuma Helios 2060 gram again, pen battle two. And then we've got a length of 20 pound fluorocarbon tied on with an all bright knot. And then we've got a mega bass zonk. Now I'm the first to admit I should probably take that middle treble off. I just haven't had a chance to do it yet and it's going to be fiddly out here and I haven't got a pair of pliers so that'll come home and I will take that middle treble off after today uh, but all we're doing we're fishing an area of reef and the reef is just uh, it runs off the side of the back of the uh, Brighton Marina West Arm essentially and it's a little finger of reef it extends out it's just coming in now and all I'm going to be doing this this lure has got a lovely action in itself so all I'm doing is just flicking it out and then it's going to be a slow retrieve back it's a big shoal of bait fish coming through now I've got to collect some mackerel for a friend of mine today, so I may try and stop and get some of those later, but for now all we're doing is a slow retrieve. I'm hoping something picks up. The water's not too bad actually, it was a bit of a breeze the last couple of days. But the water's not too bad, clarity wise, you get a couple of feet, so that's good. I've had a few casts now and I've not even had a sniff yet, and the squid rod's just been static, so I will... I will move uh, locations in a bit and try and find a few. I'm not going to go crazy today, um, but I will try and pick a couple up. It's nice to get a nice bass or a couple of squid, really, but I will go onto a slow jig. Before I leave this bit of ground, I will change methods. Um, so we're just subsurface luring at the minute, but sometimes switching to like a slow jig or a heavier sink and draw method will pick the fish up. So I can't see any birds working and I can't see any any real signs of life a little bit of bait fish going through but they're not being chased by anything so it's clearly not jam packed in here because i would see signs of life but we'll persevere anyway <clears throat> when you're working surface lures or when you're lure fishing unless you're fishing a particular bit of mark like i am now you want to work in a clock fashion clock that's with an l and you start at 12 o'clock and you gradually do a couple of casts and then you go to one o'clock two o'clock three o'clock four o'clock five o'clock until you work your way around the clock and that way you know you're covering all the ground um, especially when you're on a on a on the shore or if you're on a lake perhaps if you're doing piking or perching whatever it is you're doing um, and that way you know you cover the ground because the fish could be sitting behind one particular mark one particular bit of reef one particular bit of rock and if you're just casting randomly you're not doing anything you know there's no there's no plan to it you could well miss miss the fish so yeah working a clockwork but for me i'm working a reef so i know where the reef is and it's in front of me so probably only working within a uh, a 12 to 9 free window rather than going all the way around if that makes sense to you i haven't lost anybody yet that's got a nice bit of clarity this right over the reef now so if there was going to be anything here i would like to think i'd get a take or see signs well i'll just put the uh, squid jigs down i just come to a new mark put the squid jigs down and um i watched it go tight and it's just it's just hooked over so i think we've got something on it just a solid what squid and cuttle you won't get any you might see an occasional dart backwards from a cuttle. There we have, we've got a squid. 
There we go. Target achieved. That's all it was. Just literally. <laughs> it just got me in the face. Two jigs up, two jigs down. Sorry, two up. And that been down there a matter of seconds. And we've got target species. Boom. There we go, so one squid, that was the target, that was the main target this morning. The other target was potentially a bass, so I'm going to keep trying to get one now. Yeah, lovely, lovely little squid, I'll get him out and I'll give you a proper look at him in a minute on the camera, but he's a lovely squid or she, I'm not quite sure to tell the difference with a squid if I'm honest. Um, yeah, we're just fishing over an area of reef and I just, the first mark in there behind the wall was just barren, there wasn't, you know, we'd been there a good half hour, I surface lure in and I switched to a slow jig and that wasn't, that wasn't cutting it either, so uh, I'll come to a new mark, it's slightly deeper, and uh, yeah, we got one on the first drop, so that was good, but nothing else is yet. I've just gone on to a, I'll just show you it. So we're a bit deeper water now, and I've just, I don't want to be subsurfacing out here really, but yeah, it's gone to a Tronix, Pla Tronix Pro slow jig. Um, you hook these at the top. A lot of people hook these wrong way around. They hook them at the bottom where there's no hook and have the hooks dangling. With these slow jigs, you hook it through the top and then you give it, the reef's just coming in now, so I'm gonna get down. Um, yeah, you give it a sharp whip up and you should feel the jig sort of go brrr, vibrate for the water, if that makes sense. Uh, that's when you know you're fishing it right. But yeah, let it at the bottom. Just give it a bounce so you know you're there. And then you, you whip it up and you feel it. You feel it jigging up. And as you let it down, the slow jig flutters through the water so i'm conscious i am over a reef here so i don't want to get my squid jig snagged up so you'll see me doing two things at once here it's fine i can do that it's quite a snaggy little bit of reef it's got a big bulbous bit on the end then it goes into a thin point um i'm hoping there'll be another couple of squid around here not just the one there's got to be some more somewhere uh, but i've got another little reef just dropped out slightly in front of me there is a boat drifting down towards it, but I think they're um, I think they're mackerel fishing. So what I'm doing is I've got the, the jigs in my left hand. Just giving them a little pull every now and then. The boat is working the jigs. You know, every motion in the ocean, it is making the rods go up and down. So that's what will work the squid jigs for me anyway. But every now and then, just give it a good pull, try and catch their eye. Huge eye squid. Voracious predators. Um, go on YouTube and type in squid attack. You just see how quickly they, they move through the water. I've actually got a video. If you scroll through my videos on my shorts, I've actually got a video that shows a squid attacking a jig that's being towed. It's ferociously fast. Ferociously fast. Oh, nothing is yet. No bass playing. There's been a few cod about as well, but. Oh, I might have. I thought I had something. I have. I had, I had, I had a squid or a cut or attack my jig then. Yeah, it's back on. There we go. All right. I'll see if I can keep this. I'm almost certain I've got a squid attack my jig. No. Something, something went for it then. It suddenly went really heavy. So I think there's a cuttle down there. Maybe grab hold of it. The other day, turpin, we just couldn't get away from cuttles. They were just attacking everything we put down. Over that reef, come on. Where's his bass? Where's his cod? Come on. Oh, here comes the peak of this reef now. I'm just gonna drop it back down again, make sure I'm in, in the money. Now I'll just bounce it once off the bottom. There it is, feel the bottom, and then work the lure again. It does rise up slightly, this, so I've got to be careful. Actually, see the disturbance in the water. It peaks right up, and I can see the disturbance in the water. Come on, we're in the money now. This should be where we want to be. We'll move after this. If we don't get a fish, fish here, I will move because I would have expected a bass or. Oh, yeah, even a ballon wrasse or something. I've had a ballon wrasse this year. Believe it or not, I've been fishing ragwort, lures on wrecks, lures on reefs. Not seen a single ballon. The only one I did have, to my rod, 
I passed off the Dino when we were bream fishing earlier in the year and it was a lovely ball and a couple of pound. Other than that, I'll not have one. Still on the reef, still on it. Get down on it. Got to keep in contact with the bottom of this. You want to be bouncing that lure off the bottom. When it flutters down, it just wants, as it gets to the, as your rod tip gets to the sea, your lure just wants to be hitting that bottom again. The reef I'm going to in a minute, I have had a lot of cuttles from, so if there's cuttle on it, there, there should be squid. So we'll have a go. A lovely drift now, anyway. Again. Constantly working this, it's constantly, constantly got to think about what your lures are doing, what your jigs are doing. Oh, that's off, that's off the back of the reef now, so I don't expect to get any fish. Now we're off of that. May get some squid though, so we'll carry a drift on for a minute. But if not, I'll see you on the next mark. There we go, we got one. I was just bouncing it down the bottom and I, it's, it went it went tight and then loose, so it basically dropped it. So I just let it back down again and we got another one. Squid or a cuttle this one? Now that's another squid. Oh, he's shooting his head now. Oh, there we go. Another one. Hey, 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 hey. There we go, these jigs are lovely, there we go, that's a beautiful, beautiful one. There we go, look at that, it's another one. Come to the top jig that time, pink one. That will go in the bucket with the other one. About the same size that one. Boom. Squiddly diddlies, are playing ball today. Easy rig that one, like I said, big lure on the bottom to get it down. You're not really, you know, that's a bonus thing really. Rather than using a weight, stick a heavy lure on. Because if there's a big cod or a bass about, um, maybe even a small cod. Uh, but yeah, if they're about, then they will take the bottom lure. So you're fishing double-edged weapons really. So you might get a squid, you might get a, a fish. So you won't complain at either, will you? But that was just on the bottom there. And it was, the tide was working it. I think it must have been looking at it. Because I started working it. And as soon as I started working it, that was it. Bang, it hit it. Then it let go. So I slowly lowered it down again, and then it come back to it, so. Squiggly diddlies. But yeah, so that's it really. So this time of year, you've got to fish for what's there, and you know, when there's a bit of breeze coming, and you can't get offshore, September, October time is when it comes alive inside, it comes into its own. The squid turn up, the bass switch onto the squid, the big bass starts showing up. I'll be having a go for those when I can soon. Um, yeah, so, and then you got obviously, there's a few John Dorys about now. I'd love a John Dory, but I haven't really been targeting them really. Um, there's a few of them coming up now. Um, they'll take a lure or bait. But yeah, it's uh, this time of year now is snatch a couple of hours. I thought I'd nip out and get a couple of squid. So that's what we've done. Uh, I don't know how well you'll see them. <coughs> but I was just here, the sun's in there, you're not going to see them, I don't think. But I was uh, just sitting there, and I thought there was a little flock of birds working there. Oh, there they are. I thought, what have they spotted, these birds? And we've got, I think, what looks like a pair of porpoise. Oh, no, there's three or four of them. Oh, my God, there's a whole shoal of them. Ah. Oh. I say shoal. I know it's not a, it's a pod. I know that. But you won't see them, but just over here where the sun is, there's a pod of dolphins working. I think there's four or five there. I sort of saw one or two initially, and then yeah, there's one, two, three. Yeah, there's a good there's a good there's a good half a dozen there. Yeah, half a dozen they're track they're tracking east, so they're going away from me. Uh, I'm not gonna chase them because that's not how I operate. Let's put you back over here. Yeah, there we go. So um just about to move marks, and I saw a flock of birds. And obviously birds, you, you follow the birds, and I thought, oh, what are they chasing? And there's a pod of dolphins just slowly lapsing, they're pushing east. They feed on squid, mackerel, all the herring, all the usual stuff. Um, and they're hanging about just out there, actually. So 
Again, follow the birds. The birds is what drew my, drew my eye to that. It wasn't the dolphins or the porpoise, whatever they may be. Yeah, it wasn't those that I saw first, it was the birds. That drew my attention, and obviously it's because they're driving bait fish up. So, yeah, just goes to show, watch the birds. I know every channel says it, and I've said it before, but they see far more up there, 200 foot in the sky, 100 foot, than you see down here at water level, and their eyesight is designed for picking that sort of stuff out. So, um, we're still squidding. I'm gonna move marks now, it's not producing not producing loads but it's produced a couple of squid so um, when you're bringing these squid jigs in unlike when you're wrecking don't bomb them in oh there's another one in front of us now oh there's more in front of me wow uh, you won't pick it up on the camera and i'm not i'm not gonna try i'll hang about here in case they come over wow there's um so we've got a pot of dolphins out to my southeast four or five and i can still see them working and I've just seen two more off to my north northeast. Northeast, yeah, northeast. Um, so I'm surrounded by dolphins. Wow. One, two. Oh, there's, there's four or five in front of me as well. Oh, this is such a good morning. I wish, unless they're right here on the boat, the camera just won't pick it up. But it is absolutely crazy. It makes me sort of want to stay. I'm not going far from my next mark anyway. It's just out there, the next mark. Um, but I will hang about here and see if I can get them to come and play. I won't, I won't start the boat up. I won't chase them because that's, if you see dolphins, porpoise, I'm not a fan of boats bombing. I know the excitement gets you, but I'm not a fan of boats bombing over and trying to chase that. If they want to come to you, they will come and they will come to you. Um, yeah, wow, that's brilliant. I'll come to another mark now, just a bit further out. This will probably be one of the last marks I do. I might try an in close one after this. Um, but I got distracted by dolphins. There were two pods, about ten in total. Um, yeah, they, they, they were sort of started swimming around the boat. I did. I just missed it on the camera, but one came about twenty foot away. Big one as well. Um, but I don't know how well I've got it on the camera. I've got it on my phone. A little bit of footage on my phone. But when you're trying to guess where they're coming up, generally you miss them and you try and catch, you catch their tails going down. Um, Slightly bigger area of reef this one. There is another boat on it. I think they're mackerel fishing. Um, I've got a slow jig on one rod, squid jigs on the other. Um, haven't I did go just onto the squid. I was trying to concentrate on the squid. Um, but I haven't fished this one yet with a jig, so I'll have a, always have a go. Good chasing that bass. This park here, I did have loads of cut on the start of the year, so I'd imagine that they would, it would hold squid. It's a reef, it will hold squid, but I've not fished it for them. Every now and then I'm just giving this squid gear a little bit of a jig. It can prompt him into attack. I think mean, the last one I had it must have been sat there watching it because as soon as I as soon as I gave it a little lift, it attacked it. So again, just touching the bottom of this jig. Sharp up. I'm actually working two rods at once here. Um, I, I do this when I'm turbiting as well sometimes. I'll have two rods in my hands. Um, with a slow pitch jig, it needs a fast yank up. And the squid just needs a slow lift up. And then because the squid gear is lighter than the jig, I can get about two sharp lifts out of the jig before I then do one slow on the squid. So essentially I'm juggling with rods. Um, but this way, what it allows me to do is I can work both sets of gear and maximise my fishing. The squid jigs will work, and they have worked today already, just on their own. But it's nice to have them working, because if they're just out of a fish's eyesight, and suddenly you lift it up and move it, that can be what brings them in. Uh, same with a squid. Um, so I'm just trying to be proactive here. Every now and then I'll just stop, let a little bit of line off, because the tie gets hold of the squid gear a bit more, because it is that bit lighter. And then what I'll do is I'll start the process again. And I generally get, say, two jigs out of the, the slow pitch and then one slow one on the squid gear. So as soon as I see that squid gear pull tight, that's my cue to then get ready to give it another jig. I'm just slowly lifting it up and then it will just flutter down again in the tide. But yeah, who says men can't multitask, eh? There we go, we've got another one. It was a bit bigger, this one. 
even out where it's a cut off. So I'm not, because they're obviously, they're not hooked on by hooks, they're hooked on by spikes. So no need to go crazy with them. This, one, this one's really fighting, this one. So we haven't got another one on that top here. There we go. Number three. It's not bigger than the last one, it's just wrapped up a bit more. They're really liking that top one, that pink jig's the ones that have been get. Whether it's just because of the height of it or not. Yeah, whether it's not, it's the height, but that, that pink jig there, they're totally ignoring the blue one on the bottom and they're going for the pink one. So I'm probably going to change that over now and have a look as well. But yeah, that's three now, three nice ones. And I'm, I'm competing against dolphins now and I'm never, no fisherman's ever going to win that battle. So I'll, um, I'll stick that back down again and I'll get a pink jig out to replace that blue one with. And then I'll try and hopefully we can snaffle a few more out. But yeah, that was just, just trotting away in the tide again, that was. No one. Yeah, got three absolutely lovely squid. I mean, there's the hands, you know, they I've got big hands as well. So yeah, de decent sized squid. Um, and they all came to the um, to the jigs there, you know, the two at Paternosters. There we go, coming to the end of our little squid session now, it's sort of mid morning, half 10, 11 o'clock now. And I'm gonna get home and try and get to the gym quickly. So that's that, three squid we've ended on. I think we would have had a bit more had we not been uh, had the pleasure of seeing all the dolphins, but I, I never tire of seeing those and we're very lucky to have those here off Brighton. Two pods, uh, a four and a six, I think it was. So I'll report that to the Sussex Dolphin Project later. I uh, have got a little clip, I'll try and put it in here, but I don't think the GoPro will pick it up. So it'll be mobile footage and I'll put it at the end. Uh, but yeah, just two at Paternoster with the squid jigs, lure below it. Easy, let the tide do the work, or you can lift it up and down if you want. Um, but I was trying for a bonus bass, but didn't happen. But yeah, that's the end. Thanks for watching. Any questions, do drop them in the comments, and please do like and subscribe. And I will catch you for another episode soon.